I've noticed that power stations seem to be a, a growing, reoccurring topic with everybody I seem to talk to. I'm, I'm giving out tons of advice on buying portable power stations, and everybody's always asking me which one to get. You know, should we get the Delta series? Should we get the River series? What do you do with them? How long do they last? How much power do they have in them? What can you run off of them? Because we've got tons of AC ports on here because this has a big inverter, but this one also has an inverter here. The River 3 has an inverter as well. Now I'll give you guys some examples and use case scenarios. Like what can you use these power stations for? What, what would you do with this? Why is this useful for you? So it seems like every fall EcoFlow releases new variants of their portable power stations and this year is no exception. We've got a couple new units here that we're gonna take a look at today. We've got the new River 3, Should probably take this off here. And we have the Delta 3 Plus. That one came off a lot easier. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you these two new portable power stations. I'll tell you exactly what's new about them. We'll talk about some of the features and we'll compare them to the outgoing or the previous models. This is the River 2. And then we have a Delta 2 that would be uh, the previous model to the Delta 3, but they call it a plus now, same size or same capacity but it's just a plus. So if you're unfamiliar with EcoFlow, they make portable power stations uh, like this River 3 here. Uh, I've been using EcoFlow for several years now. They are a channel sponsor, but uh, they have no say in what goes into these videos. This is really just gonna be a tour and showing you guys what's new, what's cool. But I think they make excellent power stations. They're always innovating and updating them. They come up with new models every year, make them a little bit better. And they have what I think is the best app for controlling these. Uh, remotely, which is really awesome if you have these installed somewhere in your vehicle. But as you'll see in a second in the, with the Delta 3 Plus, when we compare it to the Delta 2, they, they've taken a lot of feedback from people like myself and customers like you guys, and I think they've made it quite a bit better than the previous Delta 2 model. So I thought for this video, it would be good to do a direct side-by-side -side comparison uh, between the previous model and the new model for both the River 3 and uh, Delta 3 Plus. So the River 3 is now more compact than the River 2. You can see that by its new height. Seems like they've accomplished this by extending the rear more underneath the handle, as the handle is now flush with the back of the River 3. I think this is a better design because now it allows it to fit into more small spaces in your vehicle if you're trying to tuck this away while packing. And it now fits perfectly under the front seats of my Jeep Wrangler. It's also a lot easier to tuck under the back seats, giving me a nice little portable power station that I can grab and go as needed. Inside we have a Life PO4 battery, which has 3000 charge cycles and 245 watt hours of capacity. And the River 3 now has EcoFlow's X-Core 3.0 technology. This improves things like its quietness, how fast it can charge, IP54 waterproofing on the battery case, and its X-Boost on the inverter. And another big change with the design is we don't have any connections on the back of the River 3 anymore. The back is basically just a handle. We now have this little flip down slot on the side which you can access the AC charging port and the DC charging port. This is where you can plug in a solar panel, but this is not removable. And above that, we also have the fans. And the fans on this are super quiet, even when it's charging at its full speed. One of the other new features is that the River 3 can run as a uninterpretable power supply. So if it's powering your device with pass-through straight off the wall power and the wall power turns off, in less than 20 milliseconds, it can cut over to the battery and keep your device up and running. We still have two AC ports on the front giving us 300 watts of output in total, and it can surge to up to 600 watts with X boost. You can turn the inverter on to power these ports, either through the button on the front, or I'll show you in a minute, through the app. And on the left side of the front, we have a 12 volt barrel connector. This is commonly used to power a fridge, and it also has a button below it that you can turn it on and off, or you can do it through the app as well. And in the middle, we have a pair of USB-A ports, and between them, we have a single 100 watt USB-C port. I definitely like the new, more compact design of the River 3. I think my only feedback would be, can we make this door removable? So if you have it down, it's not taking up space. But if it's down and something's plugged in, it's probably taking up space there anyways. Now the Delta 3 Plus has received some much more significant changes to it in this year. These are obviously very noticeable here on the front. As you can see, we have a new updated, much more modern looking display. Below that we have a set of USB ports. Now there's only four on the front now, as opposed to the six on the old Delta II. 
So just like before, we have two fast charging USB-A ports. And then next to that, we have a pair of USB-C ports. And these are now fast charge 140 watt ports. They're gonna give you a little bit more juice than the Delta II has with the 100 watt ports. And then EcoFlow has moved the AC ports to the front. We have six of them in total for a output of 1800 watts with a surge capacity to 3600 watts. In my opinion, this is much more convenient having them on the front than stashed away on the back and hard to get to, especially if you're tucking this in somewhere and and you're not wanting to have to make space to get to the ports on the back all the time. However, we do have ports on the back of the Delta 3 Plus, and they've included this nifty little door that not just swings down, but tucks away inside when not in use. Unlike before, we had a flappy door that flips up and then flaps down, and it was always kind of a pain when you're trying to plug something in because you have to hold it up, and you can't remove it or slide it into the chassis. So we still have the 12 volt barrel connector on the back. I can't really complain too much about this because I'm usually plugging my fridge into this and once it's plugged in, I really don't have to mess around with it. And we still have the same rubber plug as we have on the Delta II covering it when it's not in use. Now there's some other big changes here. On the Delta II, we only have one DC input port, which would be used for car charging or solar. So you can now plug two things into this at the same time to charge it. And below that, we have the expansion port for an extra battery, which you can also used to plug in to the alternator charger. This resolves one of my biggest complaints because having to plug a big cable into the side of this really limited how you could arrange it in your vehicle or camper. Now we can just plug it right into the back. In addition to freeing up the sides from having any plugs on them, there's also no fans on here. So if you have this tucked right up against some totes or some boxes or in a cabinet, you don't have to worry about airflow on the sides. You just have to make sure the front has some airflow and the rear has some airflow. The overall footprint remains largely unchanged between the two of them though. The previous Delta II was about 25 pounds. And the Delta III Plus has gone up a few pounds, bringing it in about 28 pounds. Putting most of the ports on the front of this, including the AC, as well as the buttons on the front of the Delta III Plus solves some of my biggest complaints that I had with the Delta II. And then putting the flip down door on the back, as well as all the expansion ports and adding an extra DC input port solves the rest of the complaints that I had with the Delta II. I think making this the perfect entry level portable power station. As I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, EcoFlow is a great app for all other devices and it's a great single pane of glass. You can go in and, and look at everything you might have up and running. And this is no exception for the River 3 and Delta 3 Plus. If you're unfamiliar with it, you can turn on like the inverter, the 12 volt ports from the app remotely, which is super handy if you've got this tucked away somewhere in your house or vehicle. When you go into the settings for the River 3, it looks very similar to the Delta 2. You have your discharge and charge limits, backup reserve. Uh, you can change your input and output settings like your AC charge speed. Uh, you can only charge this up to 320 watts. Uh, you can change the DC charging mode, but you just leave that to set to auto. But if you want to force it to solar or car charging, just changes the voltage and then how many amps you can input that in. There is one setting in here that I did notice was something I hadn't seen before, and that is the low battery reminder. So it can actually alert you when the battery drops below 20%. I haven't seen that in any of the other uh, EcoFlow power stations yet. And you've just got a bunch of other settings in here. The one I like to note is the auto timeout. Uh, so whether you want to have the screen timeout, uh, any, uh, uh, you want to have the device actually timeout, but what the one that I usually go in here and set is the AC. So if I'm running the inverter, I never want that to stop running because I might be doing something and then come back a couple hours later and want to do it. But the AC inverter does have a passive draw on the battery. So uh, be mindful if you're leaving it on all the time. The Delta 3 Plus has some additional settings. It actually has a slightly different look to it in here, um, as you may notice here. You can monitor the input and output rates just like the River 3, which is awesome. The interface looks a little bit different, but you can toggle the different output ports, including the USB, you can toggle that on. So you can turn on the inverter, the 12 volt connector, and then you can turn on the USB ports if you want. I find this super handy, um, especially when I've got it in my vehicle and I just wanna shut the inverter off because I usually have a like extension cord or power bar running somewhere else in the vehicle that I'm actually drawing the power off and that way this can kind of just stay in the vehicle and plugged in and I don't have to worry about plugging things into it all the time, especially if it's kind of buried away. Now in here, we can actually set the charging speed all the way up to 1500 watts. So do, do be mindful because in my garage, I've actually tripped the breaker a couple times, charging a power station at full speed, either 1500 watts or more with some of them. And then when I hit the garage door opener, it draws too much for the circuit. So 
you can also uh, set this up and connect it to a smart generator, which is something else that EcoFlow sells, which is a battery and fuel uh, generator. And uh, so you can have them talk to each other and uh, have the generator come on when it needs to charge and set up different charging and discharge limits. Same thing in here, I come in here and I always change the output port settings to stay on all the time. But this one here also has a memory feature. So if the power station ran out of power and when it gets power again, say during a power outage and you didn't have enough juice, which you could always buy an expansion battery for this, uh, when the power does come back on and you have stuff plugged into this, it will remember that those ports were on and it'll turn them back on again. The other feature, because this is also sort of like a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply, uh, they have a, a toggle here which you can e change and decide whether or not you want to send high quality electricity to your appliances. So do you want everything running off of the EcoFlow and the EcoFlow Delta 3 charges and then it cleans the power with its inverter and sends it to your devices? Or do you want to bypass that and have grid power go directly to your devices all the time? especially with sensitive electronics. It's nice to have in between, of them, in between them and cleaning the power. New setting in here I've never seen before called Storm Guard, which uh, you can set your location in here and it'll give you a notification if there's a storm or some sort of weather event coming in your area. EcoFlow has been very focused on disaster preparedness and disaster readiness with a lot of their devices. So they're just adding a little built-in feature here that uh, gives you a heads up, gives you a notification to make sure your devices charged 12 hours in advance if something's coming your way. And then uh, the rest of the standard settings, and this is where you'd go to update your firmware, which I always recommend doing because EcoFlow is always developing uh, things. I've seen features added. I've seen little quirks fixed along the way. They take a lot of feedback that their customers give them as well as myself. So probably my favorite thing about EcoFlow is, is using their app. It's just, it's Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It uses both for its connectivity. It's super fast to connect and open up. So. You know, you just open the app and boom, now you can do whatever you need. Turn things on, turn things off remotely. You don't have to go fumble around your, your vehicle or maybe you've got this far away in your house and uh, you don't wanna have to go mess around with it just to turn the inverter on. Uh, if you're at home and it's on Wi-Fi, it's gonna work anywhere your Wi-Fi is in your house with your app, so super cool. I thought it would also be helpful to answer a few questions about what I use portable power stations for. I get a ton of questions about, will it do this? Will it do that? What do you use it for? Why do I need this? How big of one should I get? Uh, what do we do about charging? All that kind of stuff. So generally, when somebody reaches out to me and asks about a power station, I usually send them in the direction of the Delta series systems. So this is on for 899 Canadian, regular 1099 Canadian, um, which is gonna be several hundred dollars less in the US. Uh, EcoFlow has always got uh, sales on. But anyways, the point of it is these are really good bang for your buck. I mean, these are really handy. And what I like about the River Series ones are they're kind of nice to just tuck under your seat or have something in your car that now you've got some AC. If you don't have an inverter in your vehicle, you know, you can grab it and go and you've got some portable uh, 110 that you can just bring this up into your tent. You can bring it next to you at the campfire. This one is good to throw in and uh, carry around with you. Because look at look how portable it is, it's super light, but it doesn't have a ton of capacity. The inverter is not massive, so you're not gonna run things like a portable heater or an induction cooktop off of this. But it's great for charging your phone overnight, running a little USB light in your tent. It's good for running if you've got, a like I have a USB heated pad in your sleeping bag, really great for that. And then you need to charge your phone or do something uh, next to the campfire, I know like that's gonna be a big debatable topic, phones and camping, but it is what it is. If you've got devices, you've got your kids with you, they gotta charge their tablets. These are a couple hundred bucks. They're very light, very portable. Now the Delta three is a lot of bang for the buck that you're spending at this level, but it is significantly uh, more money. You're spending 899 on this, but you're getting way more out of it. And why I recommend the Delta it used to be the Delta II, now it's gonna be the Delta III. The big thing is, it's a thousand, was it 1,024 watt hours, but you can add an expansion battery onto it. It's got this port on here on the back. So you can use this port for either the alternator charger, if you've got one of those, you wanna fast charge this in your vehicle, uh, or you can charge it through solar panels, or you can look at a smaller charger that charge as at like 30 volts. Um, there's some out there, I have a video somewhere on the channel that shows you how to do that. So 
They've added two ports on here now, so you could actually have solar on your rooftop tent. You could have a 30 volt charger plugged into here, and then you could have an expansion battery for big trips uh, and get up to around 2000 watt hours of power. But um, I always recommend this, the Delta two and now the Delta three plus is gonna be what I recommend for your uh, entry level getting started portable power station. I think it's a good price point. It's very, very handy. Having 1800 watts of output, this lets me bring an induction cooktop so I don't bring gas canisters and a gas stove anymore. I know it's not traditional, but you know what? Times change and I think a portable power station that could do all kinds of different functionality for me and then just take up this amount of space and then also be used for cooking. To me, you know, it's way better. I don't have to bring, you know, how many half full gas canisters I have. <laughs> Is You can't tell how full they are. And induction cooktop's great because in the wind, now the heat blows off, it's direct transfer right into your pan so you get a super hot pan. Um, but you know, you'd need a bit of capacity to be able to run something like that because you're probably gonna run at around 600 to 1,000 watts, which is 600 to 1,000 watts per hour, right? This is 1,000 watt hours. So you're gonna get, you know, between an hour to 90 minutes of cooking time with an induction cooktop. Now, thing is, if you've got a alternator charger or you've got some solar, you can charge this right back up. You can always add the expansion battery to it. And it's great that EcoFlow has put all this on the back now and you can hide this flap, like just small little things because that doesn't get in the way anymore. It's 2024, we like to bring devices with us. It's just how it is. I'll put some links down in the uh, description as well as pinned comment if you guys wanna check these out. There's also a coupon code for you guys. They are affiliate links uh, and EcoFlow is a sponsor of the channel. Those links do pay me a small commission if you buy something but there's no cost to you. It goes back into making these videos and going on trips and getting out there. I know some of you guys have been asking me when I'm going camping, when I'm going off-roading again very soon. My name's Casey, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.